Greetings, nerds. This is Seeing a Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Happy Tuesday. Yeah. Happy Tuesday. Um, we only have one bit of news because mm-hmm. Will is still in hur- hurricane mode. Yeah. <laughs> so- I wasn't sure like that much. There's, I mean, there, well, I guess there was a crypto news today. Uh, I guess James Gunn confirmed that crypto is going to be in Superman, but I know that that's that's the I guess that's the hottest news item. But we do have one other news item too. <laughs> so when you said crypto, I immediately was like, oh, the currency, and then. <laughs> 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 no, the 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 OG crypto, the dog. <laughs> got it, got it. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. yeah, and and then there's, I mean, we all know the Joker is just bombing at the at the box office, so yeah. that's been talked to death. Yeah, yeah. And um, the other thing that keeps going on is the Lanterns um, project, where it seems like every other week somebody else gets cast. And yep. this week, it was Aaron Pierre who has been cast as John Stewart. Yep, he was cast as John Stewart, um, confirmed last week. And uh, I guess they did the official announcement of Kyle Chandler. I know it was like, I guess, some soft announcements that he was cast as Hal Jordan. But uh, Aaron Pierre has been cast as John Stewart. And um, I know we uh, we really enjoyed him in uh, Krypton, uh, speaking of crypto and superman uh but yeah he was in that prequel series um as part of the uh i guess Ch- Ch- chitari i think uh the uh, i guess part of general zod's crew in that in that show and uh really really was you know one of the standouts from from that series and has gone on to do a lot of things i know he's in that big um uh that, that netflix movie is at uh, red ridge i can't remember the name of it i mean it's on my it's on my list of things to watch when, but uh, I know he was a big breakout. I think that was his big breakout role where a lot of people. Rebel was, Ridge. From, Rebel Ridge, yeah. Rebel Ridge, yeah. Um, yeah, that was his big breakout role. That I think, you know, definitely got him on a lot of people, more people's profiles. And um, and he's also been cast in something else recently. Um, but I'm blanking on it, blanking on it right now. I have to look at IMDb. But uh, he's got another big project coming, coming down the pipeline as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on his IMDb right now. Hold on. Yeah. Let's yeah. see a big project. He's gonna be. Are you thinking about The Lion King, Mufasa? That's it. Yep. Voice M- Mufasa. Yeah. Mufasa. He's also yeah. gonna be on an episode of The Morning Show next year. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. I was thinking Mufasa. Yeah. I knew it was a big IP. I just couldn't remember which one. That's coming out in December, right? What? Uh, Muf- Muf- Mufasa. Um, yeah. it says 2024, so I would imagine yeah, so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I want to say it's coming out in December as far as the big holiday holiday films. Yeah. Awesome. Now I'm just like spiraling down the Mufasa. <laughs> 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 it's going to be directed by Barry Jenkins. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Huh. Man, what was that? They did the quote unquote live action remake of the Lion King. It did. I, wasn't it John Favreau who did it? I believe so, yeah. Didn't yeah, it? John like, Favreau, it didn't yeah, John Favreau. Yeah, John Favreau did it. Yeah, and went, um uh Donald Glover was one of the voices and yeah. um and, and was gonna be yeah. the voice of Simba in this one too. Okay, okay. Is Beyonce yeah. also in this one too? Beyonce, no. I don't okay. I don't see I don't see her. Okay. But I don't remember that doing that well as good as they thought it was going to do. No, no. I mean, you know, Lion King's one of those things. I saw I saw the stage production of it recently. Uh and it's just amazing if you um if you haven't seen it on either Broadway or off Broadway, check it out. I mean, it's just this is amazing to see it. Uh, so I've seen that iteration, of course, the live action, and, and of course the original animated. So I guess I've seen, I've hit all, hit, I've hit all the, uh, hit all the mediums that it's been presented in. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And yet you haven't watched the Joker too. Nope, <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I'm gonna get around. I'm gonna get around to it. I will. I will 
to give you my give everyone my thoughts. I know you shared yours last week, but uh, I'll get around to it. <laughs> before, maybe it might be it might already be on uh, HBO Max <laughs> by the time by the yeah. read is going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably, probably. Yeah. Oh man! All right. Well, that leads us to the road with Agathal Long. We're still on that road. Episode five: Darkest Hour. Wake thy power. Will, what what are some of your thoughts about this episode? So, this episode, you know, Agatha, I will say, it, 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 I liked it better than episode four. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, you know, the series, is, it's definitely, you know, it has this pattern. It knows what it wants to do. Um, you know, this week we had the uh, the 80s sleepover uh, horror, horror motif. Uh, so, you know, so, of course... You know, a lot of people immediately jump to Stranger Things because yeah. that's the uh, easy eight, 80s thing to jump to now. But, um, but I mean, but as far as the, the structure of the show, I mean, yeah, I mean, they have the trials. And, you know, this week we, we, we meet Agatha's mother. We do get a little flashback to, I guess, the, uh, the coven, the original, the coven that she had that we saw in WandaVision. Mm-hmm. And, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a good episode. Uh, and it did, and it did confirm what we we talked about way back at the beginning, as far as um, who uh, who the teen was. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Wiccan. So Wiccan, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Thomas, yeah. Why the like I this episode um, it brought up memories of the what we knew about Agatha from from one division. Mm-hmm. Um, I had forgotten, though, about her mother of it all. <laughs> yeah, I did too. <laughs> um, and 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 once it was brought, I was like, oh yeah, I re- I remember there being a bit of discourse and and her mother basically trying to kill her. Mm-hmm. And so so I guess here here's here's my question. Um, yeah. Why do you think Rio, who has had so many like such a weird in my opinion, a weird character um, structure or some, I don't know, inconsistencies, um, especially with her and Agatha. Like, she was very adamant um, that they were not to leave Agatha with her mom. Right. Why do you think that is? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I I really hadn't really thought that much about the show since we watched it. It sounds like you this week <laughs> with uh, some things, but uh, I, you know, I do. You're right about the inconsistency with the with with their characterization. You know, some and I don't know if it's very critical for Darkhold. Maybe it's tied to the Darkhold or something. I I don't. I really don't know. I don't know. I would love to yeah. hear our listeners to like give their their thoughts on on why it's so critical for Agatha to complete the trials in, in this show. Um, well, yeah, yeah, and it's also like with Rio um like moving Agatha aside. So mm-hmm. we first get introduced it to, um to Rio as someone who's trying to kill Agatha and we mm-hmm. don't really get an understanding of why. Um, at first, I honestly thought she was somewhat a part of the Salem Seven. Yep, same here. Um, I don't think she is. Nope. No. Then we find out that they were pretty much in a relationship, and then there was a betrayal, and she works for M- Mephisto, who and had her take Agatha's son. Mm-hmm. So, but but we still don't know why she's mad. <laughs> <laughs> at Agatha. Like, you see where I'm going with yeah, this? I do. And there, um, the other Coven has, members have also picked up on this, where in that moment where where I think it was Jennifer who's like, wait, wait, wait a second. We we can't abandon her. You, you said you were okay with killing her, but mm-hmm. we can't leave her with the mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one plus one is not making two right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I do, I now that the Wiccan of it all is kind of in a way 
that mystery is resolved, I hope the writers flesh out more about A, the history, and just also the motivations of Rio, because yeah. she's a very confusing character. She is. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, unless she, you know, like you said, she she did work with Mephisto and did and 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 did have a role in, I guess, Nicholas Scratch, Agatha's son, um, being taken away. And 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 we do see and we do get at least the spirit of of Nicholas, you know, in through the Ouija board and in this episode. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So, you know, so I mean, they're they're all interconnected. You know, for for what purpose? Um, you know, we, I guess it remains to be seen. Like you bring up, you bring up a very important scene where <laughs> essentially the whole trial is to punish Agatha yeah. in this episode, yeah. and then that leads to, in a way, her mother taking over her to some extent, and in a way revealing the true nature um mm -hmm. or the dv the the agatha who we've met before the version who's just po very power hungry yeah. Yeah. um and it's interesting to see how she how um agatha goes in and out of that mode because i i do think a part of her it, it, it's 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 hard because i I think especially because early on she hears her, what we believe to be her son crying, mm -hmm. um, saying mom. And so all along, especially with the presence of the teen, she's reminded about this this kid who she yeah. gave up. And, and so I think that that potentially could spark some change in her. Mm -hmm. Um, which we, we see glimpse of after the fact, um, where she's trying to plead with the teen and saying, that wasn't me. Yeah. I didn't mean to, it was out of my control. Um, and so they did a very good job. And then, yeah. and, but then there's even the moment when, when she starts to taunt him. Mm -hmm. And, and so I guess this is my next question. We know from a previous episode, the, the siege or it's not the siege <laughs> the sigil the sigil, the sigil. Yeah. can only be removed by the the witch who put it on mm -hmm. so so scarlet's not in this episode no so so who put the sigil on was it agatha or was it the teen itself it may have been a teen himself if he knows that his mom is wanda or or maybe Rio did it. Ooh. Was there was there an interaction between him and Rio before he really started to or maybe that's just something we're not shown because that's not shown, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not I'm still not sure exactly how the sigil got removed in that moment. Um, which shout out to the musical crew, like, yeah, <laughs> I, it, the, I will be honest, the, the moment was all over TikTok, like days before I watched the actual episode. So I knew that was coming Yeah, and, and we've already speculated as much, but it still was pretty, pretty good. It was a good, it was a good reveal. It, I, I, yeah, yeah. It, it, it worked. It really did work. Yeah. Yeah, it, it That's... did. Especially because. He he also very similar to Agatha in this episode goes from the teen we know mm -hmm. who cares for the other witches in this coven who believes in Agatha gets disappointed by her and is almost pleading like tell me that like this isn't who you really are to his mom yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his mom in witch form. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so like that flip that occurs. Um, yeah, yeah. Both of them have um, show show that in this episode. They do, they do, and, I, and I, yeah, and I, and I do like that. I, I think that's one of the things that just why I, I said at the outset this is a, this the show's been good in the sense that they are laying they have 
following up on breadcrumbs that they established in, in earlier episodes, and and then they're weaving it through the thread of, you know, with each trial, uh, it's the you know resolving certain things, but then opening the door to to, to deeper mysteries that, that we that we discussed this evening, and and also just showing the character, you know, showing the flip flop and characterizations with 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 the with these folks. So. You know, because like you know, as we as we talked about before, you know, Agatha had a, a I guess a, a, an affection for the teen because it, you know it reminded her of her son. Um, but at the same well, time, she had, a, she had a hope for for yeah. a moment mm-hmm. that was her son. Correct, correct. <laughs> um, but also, I think she also had some leery. You know, she also had some weird feeling too that this teen could be tied to possibly tied to Wanda or something like that you know yeah yeah. definitely which (laughs) something else we we can't not talk about is um Catherine Hahn's impression of Mrs. Hart yeah it it had me going (laughs) yeah I actually thought that (laughs) that was happening and I'm like yes for the rest of the episode (laughs) please have her be (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that that would be punishment for Agatha for yep. sure. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that did work. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah, there was only I guess it was only the mid part of the episode when the mom showed up where I kind of checked out. But um, yeah. yeah, but um, but yeah, when she when she was Miss Hart, um, I uh, yeah that, that I was like, hey, she she nailed Deborah Jo Rupp's character <laughs> characterization. <Right. laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, she was. She was she was really good. She was really um, good. Yeah, another thing too that uh, the, with the beginning of the episode I liked too was the uh, how they had to had to uh, the whole the back and forth about the about brooms and how how basic yeah. it is and the and the sexism and you know just the, the just like all you know that whole discussion about that I, I was just crack I was laughing out loud because I thought that was just like. Oh, you know, we got to basically we we got to do this to, you know, get away from the Seven Sisters. Uh, and also we got more you know details about the Seven Sisters in that um, that they're the uh, descendants of the uh, original coven. They're the daughters of the original yes. coven that out that uh, that Agatha killed. So, you know, so again, it, 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 it brought the right amount of stakes for, for why they're so dangerous. Yeah, a very maternal show we're mm. watching right now. Yeah. With Agatha all along for sure. Yeah. Um, so and and the closer we get to Halloween, the closer the road will end. <laughs> yeah, and there were, <laughs> and I will say though that I, I did get kind of there were it had the right speaking of Halloween, it did have the right creepy moments this week. I felt this was the first episode where where when this, the the, the uh, animals were like in the woods and they were transforming into the Seven Sisters, they had the right creep the, the right spooky element this week. It, it definitely worked. Yeah. For me, for, yeah. for me, it did. Yeah. You know, as much as a Disney Plus show can can, can get kind of creepy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um. All right. Well, that brings us to the Penguin episode for Santani. Mm-hmm. I know they say it in the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, yeah, like the, the Joycey uh, Santani. <laughs> Santani. Santani. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> oh man um yeah will why don't you share your thoughts about this episode uh riveting i, I was locked in start to finish uh we really get we you know this was as we've talked about before you know each our three leads get their episodes you know we had the penguin reestablish himself with the first couple we get Vic last week, and this week is Sophia's backstory. And I just literally, from start to finish, um, I I was I was locked in with this with this episode. It uh, you know definitely uh, shades re- you know, re- shades the our perspective on things. Just even from the, from the get, uh, you know, when the episode starts out, you know, last week we we get. The when Vic rescued Oz from uh, the Maronis, we got things from his perspective. But this episode kicks off with 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 Sophia's perspective as far as mm-hmm. what was going down in that in that uh, that moment. And 
and and of course again her learning why she cannot trust Oz and we and we and we see the first portrayal in this episode for you know for for about that and so I just this was a, a again just a a solid solid outing by the show it gets better each each week and um I'd love to hear your thoughts on it yeah so um I I agree with you it's it's funny because within the first three four minutes um, we get an, an explanation for why why Oz was okay with leaving Sophia behind. Mm-hmm. And it's very simple. Nadia had already let it out of the bag. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Nadia, like, shout out to Nadia because yep. <laughs> she's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not a man in this situation. I'm not going to let you spin your lies and play dumb here. I'm going to call you out in front of a co-conspirator and make mm-hmm. sure she knows exactly who she's dealing with. <laughs> Which, and and they did it so well. And also just, um, there there's a line that we hear in the first and last week's episode that's carried over into this um, episode. And, and I think it has something to do with like, you can trust me and whatnot. And, and be, beyond Nadia spilling the, um, letting the cat out of the bag, I think what was also really interesting was to see Sophia not only digest that fact, which mm-hmm. she kind of already had suspicions of, but also the then witnessing him try to use um, similar language mm-hmm. and um, similar placate to the the promises and the friendship and the loyalty that not five minutes ago, he was just telling her, like yep. he's now saying that to Nadia because Nadia has the gun in her hand and it's directed at him. Yep. So, I mean, I mean, Penguin's a survival. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's, he's, he doesn't care yep. at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, he might care a little bit about Vic, but that's about it. I don't even know anymore. I don't, yeah, at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vic, so, yeah. Vic better watch and, his back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and I still think the first, even the second episode established was was arguably Sophia's episode just because mm-hmm. it it we had a lot more scenes with her. But this episode... <laughs> I had, I had, I think early on you told me you're like, yeah, there's probably gonna be a flashback episode. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And I, I was like, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to see a flash. I like, I like living in the present. Well, if you're gonna do a flashback episode, this is an example of how to do it, mm-hmm. because this is not a flat. This is not Penguin's flashback episode. This is Sophia's. Yeah. Which makes all the difference in the world. Mm-hmm. Because it's the first episode that solely the penguin was maybe in it for two, three, four scenes, like a handful of scenes, hardly at all. I think we might have even seen Al more we, than we saw him. Yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> yeah. We did. Yeah. And so, but it's fascinating because even though like this was Sophia's episode, it's still the penguin show. And he's lurking in the background and it's still what she goes through informs us so much about him mm-hmm. as well. And also the power and the structure of this world. Um, so, so, so yeah. And, and also within the first five minutes, um, I did not forget when you brought up last week, the line that she has in it says to Oz is is and I'm not the hangman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which yeah. when you brought it up, I knew I'm like, yeah, it's probably going to mean something, but I didn't realize we were going to get this episode the yeah. way we did and mm-hmm. that it would I had no idea. I mean, I guess for you will because you picked up on that line, did you at all think like 
oh, I wonder if it was a setup or I wonder if, like, did no. you think maybe Penguin was the hangman? No, no, I just, I, you know, I, this, that's, you're, you're completely right. I mean, the way that this is how to do a flashback and I did not pick up, and I, you know, whenever she said I'm not the hangman, I just thought it was like your traditional um, denial. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But whenever they really start to flesh out what was really going on, and yeah. even like when the flashbacks with, you know, with the, with, you know, uh, this, the way they structured it was just so brilliant because they used the Suicide Foundation as far as Isabella Falcone. And, you know, they, they frame it in the stance of mental illness and, you know, and and we see Sophia, you know, even though she knows, even though she knows the family, the, the true family business, you know, she is sort of the, the, the you know, and, and also Carmine as well, you know, they put the, pub, the nice public face out there as far as like, well, you know. Well, I think what, what you're getting at is also. Yeah. Like they they introduce it in a way where you as a viewer, knowing mm. what you know, automatically assume, oh, this is how she, this is her hunting ground. Mm -hmm. That's she exactly right. That's exactly right. She that's how she identifies the girls. She's gonna yep. kill everything, and yep. it takes it takes a while before you also start to piece together and realize, oh. No, no, no. She's really not involved in this. Mm -hmm. And but she's also yeah, yeah. So so I it, they 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 also they it's hard a hard thing to do. And mm -hmm. we've covered so many shows. Yeah. But it's very hard to kind of give information and context without the viewer being like oh we already knew that or mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like like we knew a version of events but there were some gaps we didn't know how big those gaps were yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> for that part Be because because a we didn't or at least i don't remember there being any talk about how sophia and al's mom died nope. um and it was quote unquote told that it was suicide and mm -hmm. we see sophia find her and yeah. instantly we're like oh this is where she gets the idea it we're basically carmine <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, as the viewer you you spend probably the first 15 to 20 minutes of this episode in flashbacks from that lens of like, okay, we we know where she ends up, mm -hmm. um, and she does end up in Arkham, but it's because she was trying to get down. She was she was putting together the pieces that Carmine not only is killing these girls, yeah, but he is also behind the murder of of her own mom, yeah, and yeah. she. And Penguin reports to Carmine that Sophia met with a reporter. So another mm -hmm. thing, yep. like that's a very different thing. Like, I, I guess my question to you, Will, is yeah. do you think that he that he knew, I don't know, like how innocent of that do you think the penguin is in the fact like well i know she shouldn't be investigating that but and then to tell the dad and like do you how much do you think like he knew how far that would get her into ultimately ending up in arkham because of that i don't think he did yeah i, th I think it you know and i was as, as i was thinking about T talking about this episode with you tonight oz has basically fucked over two falcons albert we call it in 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 in, in, in the right in the in the catalyst for it was the same in both situations they made him feel small yeah he killed alberto because alberto made him feel small whenever 
you know, in the first episode, he was talking about the story. Yep. And, and then in this episode, it's because when, you know, he gave advice to Sophia uh, as far as talking to the reporter, you know, she's like, know your place, driver. Right. So I don't think he had a grand plan to like, you know, I don't think he knew the depth of what Carmine was doing. He might have, but I don't, I, I think it was at, at his core was he just felt small and he just, in, in typical Oz way, he just reacted and he saw her talking to a reporter and, you know, he was, you know, and because give him, yeah. If, when, when they pull her, him over, and she, he's driving her home. He, he's reacting in a way like it's not as though he figured out the long plan of this. Nope. Like, like I agree, he he screwed over two Falcons, but at the same time, it's it still feels different with Sophia because yep. there was there was a there's such a it's not a father like care. It's not boyfriend like it's just like companionship almost mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. partnership that because it I feel like in a way she gave him a shot and yeah. and then he unfortunately try I, I it, it almost could be viewed as a form of protection like you yeah, need uh, yeah. your daughter she can't be talking to these because he might mm -hmm. have already known that carmine was behind the murders right yeah, yeah. right but right. i think what really did it for carmine to ultimately sh like send his daughter away was the fact that like when she asked like or when she says there were bruises on your hands that day yeah. That day. Like, yep. Like, oh. she, she pieced it together. Yeah. When she saw those photos from the reporter and she pieced, yeah. 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 Because because the other girls aside, she was the one who found her mom. And I think mm -hmm. that was well known yeah. to the public. So right. she could have easily, like, in an order of being like, I'm gonna report this because. I want justice for my mom, fuck my dad, and all of that. So, yeah, yeah it's just they they did it very well, and they um, that story unfolded um, in a very very deep way. Um, mm -hmm. As we we then watch um, her go into Arkham, being yep. told you got you got to. Being told, and shout out to Al. I mean, we're introduced to him in one scene at the very beginning. Total douchebag. Bit of yep. a douchebag in this episode, but also you recognize and and they they show you why she was so dead set and is so dead set on vengeance for him. Like yep. their connection and their yep. their um, sibling bond was so strong. Yep. So, so I, I think they did Al justice in this episode. They, they did. They really did. And, you know, and the, the, you know, I think about as, as the setup happened and it was so hard. I mean, Carmine had everything orchestrated, even down to like, you know, setting up a, a, a bum lawyer who was just like, you know, uh, you know, as, as I was sitting there watching that scene, I'm like, you know, the lawyers fit. I mean, everything, you know, it really, all the all the trust issues and all the betrayals they you know they show it just really like hammer home why Sophia is the way that she is in this episode and and you and you brought up a good point too with the myth you know with the fact you know they do like for example everyone knows that she discovered her mom mm -hmm. and and so it gave you know so they it, it, it gave further ammunition and and um salience when they could be like she's mental you know she's she's unstable she's you know we, we she has a history of, she she's mentally ill because of you know traumatic this traumatic event that happened to her so yeah so whenever so you know when they said they're going to do the six month evaluation you know mm -hmm. it, it 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 all like really you know it all fall all the pieces fall into play and it shows us just how how dangerous Carmen Carmine Falcone is. Right, right, right. And just how, how messed up Arkham is as yeah, a whole. Because yeah. it's she goes in having not killed anybody. 
mm-hmm. she she stays long enough to eventually kill someone. Yeah. Poor Meg Pie. Poor Meg Pie. I quite, yeah. So now that's the one I think I did see. <laughs> I did see something happen to Magpie at some point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Which did we meet a version of Magpie we, in uh, Batwoman? We did. We did. We did. Yeah. I, I was like, he seems so familiar to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, which is good because I mean we've had so many iterations of Gotham, of yeah. Arkham, and everything that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's almost its own like Batman is a genre. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, but you but you're right about Arkham though. I mean, that this really got to why Arkham is has gotten the you know reputation that it has. Cuz I mean, there's the campy Arkham, there's the, you know, I think cuz we got, you know, we got a little bit of the campy of Arkham I think with uh, with Batgirl, Batwoman. Mhm. Um you know, and we've seen, you know, we've heard it referenced in other v- versions of live action. But I think that, you know, whenever we see Sophia being processed there and, and you know, and she touches on that, too, whenever, you know, she torches Oz in the first episode. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, but we really, you know, but we see it and just you feel it. I mean, it was a hard watch. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think what kind of took me out though was um the choice of music was a bit campy mm, yeah, um yeah. because it definitely lend it to that snap those uh those lyrical notes you're used to when like we enter comic whether it's a tv mm. show or a movie and it's just there is i can't put my articulate when i'm trying to how i'm trying to describe it but but yeah, there was some campy that kind of made it not as painful to watch as mm-hmm. if maybe it was set to something else. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I um, can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, and and the guy who plays Julian, great mm-hmm. actor, does a good job. Yeah. He he's from Sons of Anarchy, and so oh. I can't not see. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I it's so funny to me, and th- this just happens every mm-hmm. so often. Where I mean, not everyone can be um, Ca- Colin Farrell and dressed in like five pounds of makeup, where <laughs> 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 you just completely forget. But almost to a point where you were constantly reminding yourself, "That's Colin Farrell. That's Colin Farrell." <laughs> just <Yep>. make sure. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, so, yeah. and, and, and his journey, it is, it's a bit, it's a bit weird. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think they, they could, in a way, and maybe they'll do this. I mean, we still got episodes to go. Um, I almost want to say Sophia needs to be a lesbian for this to work because she um, is basically had every single man in her life screw her over. So to have this weird dynamic with her and the therapist, I mean, I've, I've, since the first time we met Julian in present day, Mm -hmm. I was like, man, he, he seems, there's something off about him. Like, are we sure he never raped her? Like, are we sure? Yeah. (laughs) Which it doesn't sound like they're that that's the case because no. he apparently resigned yeah. early on and then also helped Alberto get um, Sophia out eventually. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. took them a decade plus, but they event- she eventually got out. Yeah. Um, which maybe we'll get some future flashbacks about how exactly they end up getting out and and it and. They, they touch on it some. Reason, what I said, they do touch on it some though, because I think you know part of it is, you know, I think, you know, the the guilt because you see him self medicating from you know whenever she whenever she does wake up in his place and starts going through his desk and you know he sees the pills. Well, yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, he's been guilty since day one, but yeah. I think um, what I was gonna say was. I think probably the only reason why Al and Julian could get her out, though, is the moment that Carmine dies. Yeah, yeah. Like, she was never going to get out anytime, like, with him still alive. 
you're good. You're, you're, you're right. And, That's okay. 100% correct. Yeah. Also, okay. Well, let's go back to the Batman for yeah. a moment. A movie yeah. I've only seen one time to this day. Yep. Um, but I do, re- I did remember throughout this episode, that's right, Celine Kyle in this universe is Sophia's half sister. I think so. Carmine is, her, is his, like, it was revealed in the Batman that Carmine is her dad. That's right. That's right. It was. And her yeah. mom used to work at the 44 Below Club or whatever mm-hmm. they call that club. Yep. Now, and so this whole time, watching this episode, as soon as I remembered that, I was like, oh my God. So, so did, 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 did she die by supposed suicide? Yeah, you know, <laughs> like, like, it I'm, begs the question. I'm trying to, like, and for people who are obsessed with that movie, because you guys know I won't go and rewatch it, but. Somebody might need to do some rewatching and let me know if there's at all the circumstances because I also feel as though Carmine is the reason why Celine's dad or mom is dead. Yeah. I so think you're right. I I just I wonder if there was a seed planted all the way back there. <laughs> I, I'm you know there probably was there probably was because I know yeah because I know I know Falcone I mean even in the I was just looking at his uh, it is. I think they 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 firm it up in the movie. I think in the comic book, I think it's just a lewd, it's, it's 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 a rumor, or it's a, a ledge. But you know, they do flesh it out, like you said, in in, in the movie. So yeah, because she um, at one point wants to kill him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And speaking of speaking of like uh, the Batman too, and and also uh, you know John Turturro had a scheduling conflict, so he couldn't he could not reprise the role in in this. Um, yeah. episode, but Mark Strong, man, he was like he brought the intensity, uh, especially to uh, with the younger younger Carmine uh, and those glasses and but the <laughs> the red glasses and but the 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 energy he was exuding there, uh, it, it really I think also helped set the tone and also set the the, um, the menacing plot that he you know that this guy would be a guy that like to to, to cover up his sins he will he would like put his daughter away in a place like arkham i will be honest yeah um i did not interpret it at that to be that menacing of a betrayal <laughs> i yeah well it was it was I it was that it's a physicality because... of it not so much yeah well, well, I just say that because the whole time I'm thinking to myself, I could have sworn Will told me that this was going to be played by the same actor who's from the movie. This is not the same actor. No, <laughs> no, it, I told you, yeah, I told you he was not going to be in there. Yeah. Oh, see, and I remembered the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> he was like, it's not John Turturro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then even so, like whether I knew or not, I'm still watching and being like, that's not John DeToro. No, no yeah. that's, that's so weird to me. Um, and but I almost feel as though that's why we didn't see as much from mm-hmm. him. Yeah. And honestly, their scenes weren't even that long. Is because I, I a lot of the audience has seen the Batman, if not once multiple times and yeah. and he, he, that's such a figure in that movie yeah that it's just it's really hard to then be like yeah but yeah. and they did it they did as best as they could yeah but to um, your point though i mean it, it, it they didn't need to be that long i mean i think the, the no. points were were made yeah. yeah yeah no they 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 cut it down as much as they could to yeah. still keep the the points um the same regardless i i just i've i didn't i was distracted by Mm. the um the (laughs) stand-in i'm I'm so sorry um but but i'm glad that you weren't i'm glad that you were not but but yeah 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 i knew i mean i recognized it but i was just like i I was like for stand you know for for stand-in actor it, it worked for me yeah, I mean, uh, especially I'm given also, that it was ten years prior. So, yeah, I'm, hey, I'm also telling you how the actor who plays Theo Rossi is his name. Theo Rossi plays Julian. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you're never not gonna be that guy <laughs> from Sons of Anarchy. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it happens. 
Yeah, yeah it happens. <laughs> I mean, that that character I essentially spent six, seven years with. <laughs> so, so with TV actors, it's really hard to get get a yeah. get that out. But yeah, fair, fair um, enough. Fair enough. <laughs> while at the same time, you like seeing familiar actors because you're like, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and you know, yeah, you yeah. know if a certain person is char- actor, actress is playing a character, you know, because of the, because of who it is, you know, you're gonna get yeah. a good performance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. All right. Well, that that leads us to to the um the revenge plot yeah. of it yeah. all, yeah. and so Sophia, we Sophia, we return to present day, and Sophia ends up going home to dinner um Mm -hmm. to start to start a new chapter in her life um and and i'm i'm sorry but this just played out and reminded me so much of the jack nicholson scene from the batman Mm -hmm. where they they gas the art oh yeah yeah they're at a museum and they gas the plate right yeah yep Yep. For some reason, like bits and pieces of that scene, because I was a baby when that movie came out. <laughs> <laughs> I but I I vaguely remembered that. And so how this whole thing played out, um, it just it, I felt I'm like, this has to be some sort of homage because yeah. it's like she turned her house into a gas chamber, essentially. Yeah. And, yeah. and so my my question though is. What what was the timeline here? Because when when she gets up and goes into the house, is, does she, so is that when she turns on the gas, or has the gas already been on? It's been on all night. It's been on all night. Okay. Yeah. And has then has Johnny's windows been open all night? Yeah, I guess he's he was for whatever reason he slept with the window open. Okay. Um, or she, or she or, made sure to she, open yeah. the window. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now. But, uh, yeah. Are you thinking Luca is dead? Oh yeah, Luca's dead. He was like, he was, he was. They, they panned on him. They panned on him. Okay. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. Because his, uh, his wife was on the floor, and he God. was like laid over. Yeah, he was. Then why was Johnny in bed when everybody else seemed like they were still at the dinner pl- table? So I think so. They had a, they had a dinner party. They the dinner and everything sort of played out with 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 her scene. And I love how she like named all the victims and and even you know dropped in you know in there that she's actually a victim of all all these people too of of, right. of Carmine. And and then. Um, they, they, I guess they cut to, I guess they cut to her going to the room, her room, back up to her room. She pulls out the gun. And I was just like, I was wondering where they're going to go with that. Um, and she lights a cigarette and stuff and opens the window or maybe, oh, actually, you know what? Was that, maybe that was actually BD's room that she went up to because she did open the window to smoke and she left the window open. So okay. I bet she, yeah, so I think that's what it was. That's when she went up there. So it was planned. She planned to keep BDO alive. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. makes so that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, but so that's that was the moment. Dead yeah. And everybody else was still partying. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so they, yeah, so she yeah, everybody else goes to yeah, they party. She gets her niece. Um, I don't know if it, I, I guess I guess is a little girl her niece or or her maybe We're cousin. Gonna, her, we're gonna just call her the niece. Yeah, the niece or the cousin, and make sure she's out of the house while everybody else crashes. And she, had, yeah, she had turned on the gas, and yeah, and yeah, just made everyone asphyxiates from carbon monoxide poisoning, and except for Johnny. Yeah, who went to bed? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I can't. Yeah. I understand all the <laughs> I rest. Guess, of I guess he couldn't have his little trice with Luca's wife because they I, were there together. <laughs> I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I need someone to explain that to me. Well, I think that goes back to like some of the, uh, yeah, 
What about what is it about VD that she keeps keeps him around? Maybe because he has well, that. Well, even, see, I'm not even questioning that. I'm yeah. just questioning how is it that everybody else was like partying it up and VD's oh, yeah. like, like in bed to the point where he doesn't even get woken up by like a lot of thuds of people just like falling randomly. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a big house. It is but a big it's house. It's so yeah. weird to me that he's like clearly he put on his pajamas, <laughs> he brushed his teeth. <laughs> well, like then my whole I just I know I'm never gonna get an answer to this. I understand, yeah. but at the same time, it's a little bit weird. I mean, yeah. for such a well executed <laughs> episode. Yeah. So well, she think I guess she. So yeah. <laughs> Fair, that's a fair. That's a good point. That's 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 logic. Logic, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sense, I mean, yeah. Logic is not a play in a comic book show. In this, in this as a, as for Johnny, he's 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 so far, arguably even more than Luca, between Sophia and Penguin, he's been like the one to to get taken down and it's probably yeah. because he's the the right hand man and arguably yeah. the one the right hand man knows a lot more than the head so yeah, yeah. he may he not knows. have as much power but, but he, he knows where knows the bodies are buried lot. yep yeah so yeah. he also may be be used in a way of the enemy of my enemy is my friend so if she wants yeah. to go after oz then Vidi's the guy to partner with because Vidi oh, yeah. has also been wanting to get take Penguin out for a while now. So yeah, yeah. So so yeah, I I can I can see that um, as long as she has the upper hand, which I, I think she still has the blackmail and all that stuff. But the, I don't know what the blackmail would do do her any good for, yeah. considering like if Luca's dead and everything. But yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure Luca. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Yeah, because otherwise yeah. we'll be the yeah. I mean they've been pretty much removed. The whole Falcone, except for VD family, off the table, which is you know because that makes because that you know again we are you know at the very outset of this of this show after the flood with the Riddler, um, you know there it, the, 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 there creates there's the power vacuum that that eventually the Penguin will end, that we know will end up filling. So this is part one of that vacuum. Um, part one of that whole segment being taken care of except for media and of course he'll media will be eventually taken care of as well yeah yeah all right well i think that is it for us tonight will why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you yes you can find me at uh will m polk on x formerly known as twitter at w-i-l-l-m-p-o-l-k and you can find me there too at S J Belmont S J B L M O N T. Please follow our crew there at at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and Threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you hear podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.